Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back. It's Renee, Lovely Lavender Wishes. I hope you're having a very blessed day. So today we are continuing on with our blue wintery journal. Okay, so before we begin, uh, from our last video, y'all, so you know I was using the mica powders with the water. Um, let me see if I can find a page. So for example, the mica powders, you can see the, the glittery. Um, with the water. I had um, a few um, wonderful, wonderful, thank you crafters, um, text me, email me, <laughs> comment below saying that they were wondering if the mica powders would rub, up, rub off with the water because they had seen things in vi other videos. Well, you are all correct. <laughs> I waited until it all dried and then I tried to rub it and yes, the mica powder will rub off with water. I've never used them with water before. I have seen other people do it. So I was like, oh, I must be able to do it. Usually I use gum Arabic. You need to use some kind of, um, what is it? Bonding agent in with your mica powder. So some, some of the crafters said you can use like a little bit of glue, watered down glue with it. Some others said that they mixed um, some fixative in with their mica powders and water if you want to use the water. Um, and then I usually use gum Arabic. I just didn't think I had enough to finish all the pages. So I thought water would be fine. Well, it's not, y'all. It's just so you know. So then what I had to do is grab my fixative and spray all the pages with fixative. Now, I only got about halfway through my pages with the fixative before I ran out of fixative. So now I am waiting for my fixative to come in the mail. So I will finish the pages off. So you can do it with water if you're gonna spray the pages with a fixative. Um, you probably don't wanna spray it with hairspray just for the fact that depending on what hairspray you use, it could make your pages sticky. Um, if you get a good fixative, it'll um, fix everything to the page and you won't have anything rub off. Um, so that's a little tidbit for everybody to know. Um, it's a good thing. Um, thank you all so much for letting me know that. And again, we're part of the whole craft. I love the crafting world that we all can help each other. And I learn new things every day. So hey, I, that is something I learned. And so now I will never use just straight water with my mica powders again. There is though, so I did watch a video. There is a different kind of pearlescent powders out there that can be used with water. So I guess you really got to determine which mica powders you're using. So that being said, I am not going to work on these pages yet until I get them all fixed <laughs> with the fixative to make sure that nothing rubs off. So far, so good. I, you know, I wasn't really touching them. They're all dry. You can see the mica powder is still there. So I'm leaving it. Um, what I did is I put this whole stack of paper under a heavy um, dictionary last night and now they're all flat so um, you know with using a lot of water on your pages um, embossing I did emboss all the pages I'll, I'll show you when I get all the fixative done um, but I embossed almost every page with some kind of silver you can see here I'm um, stenciling you can see up there um, so I worked on that all um, afternoon yesterday or the day before whenever I was doing these pages um, and then once that was done I put this under a dictionary overnight and so now my pages are almost flat you could iron them if you really want them flat I kind of like the crinkly feel so I just wanted to flatten them all out and get them all um, you know like this um, and if you do it under a thick book you can do that so moving on that was the learning experience of the day. <laughs> so today I'm gonna, um, so we're gonna work on different tags and, and such for the book um, in the meantime until I can get my fixative, fix all the pages and get make sure that, that nothing rubs off and then we'll work on the pages. But today I am gonna work on another one of these type of um, tags for our journal. So these are fun to make and super easy. So I'm gonna show you how to do them. So let's get started. So all you need is a piece of white or colored, whatever, you know, piece of card stock. And then I'm gonna grab, I am going to grab my little uh, texture boutique. This is like a little embossing thing since these tags will fit perfectly. I have these snowflakes. 
Um, this is an embossing folder. All you do is put your paper in here. If you don't have one of these machines, you can look at a previous video that I've done on how you can get the same look without one of these machines with a rolling pin or something heavy that you can press on. So you just run your, your um, page through the machine. Sorry, I know I'm shaking the camera because it's attached to the table. One of these days I will get a better setup. But again, use what you have. And you can run it through once, but I like to go all the way through and then I like to run it through again, just to make sure. You know, because I don't want to have to line it up and run it through again, so I just run it through the other way. I'm trying to do this as smoothly as I can so I don't wiggle the phone, but it's not working. Sorry, y'all. Okay, so put that away. And then when you take your paper out, look at that. So cool. Ooh, pretty. <laughs> you can do that with lots of things. Okay, so the next thing I did was get my trusty foil out, my reactive foil. Grab my glue stick. And I'm literally going to just kind of smear glue along the edges because I want like a framework. And then in a couple spots on... Oops. Oh my gosh, y'all. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to hold the glue at the same time. Let's put that away. <laughs> oh, Lord help us. Okay, silver side up or the shiny side up. You got a dull side and a shiny side. Right? <laughs> I think so. I think so. So, yes. <sighs> it's late in the day, y'all. Where is my card going? Okay. So find something that you can burnish it with and just scrape it along. Yay. And then when you pull it off, look at that, y'all. And it'll stick to the parts that are raised from your, um, one in a few more places too, um, from your embossing. I love this foil, y'all. I use it on so many things. Tags and Bible journaling and edges of things and just ugh, so fun. Okay, so I'll put that to the side because we'll be using that a lot throughout this one. Just like I did with my other journals, um, this one's gonna be silver. So, okay, I have that. The next thing I'm going to do is find like a focal point. So I have these little birds. I love these little like winter birds. So I was printing out a bunch of stuff that I had um, or some images that I found or what have you um, that maybe I can tear up and use. But I love these birds and I'm cutting them out with my deckled edge uh, scissors. So to give it like a torn look because even though it's gonna be like a modern type book with whites and stuff and won't be so antiqued up, I'm still gonna be, you know, torn edges and things like that. Okay, so that's going to be, so I'm just gonna follow along this one because I'm gonna have two um, different places where I'm gonna put these. So I'll go maybe right here, right here, same spot. Um, and then I'm gonna grab, let's see. Okay, so, this was part of a tutu <laughs> that I had. And so um, I took, let's see, I think these are pinking shears. I don't know what kind of scissors these are. I got these in a big craft sale. Um, and I'm not a sew, I'm not a, like a sewer. <laughs> so I think these are called pinking shears. Um, I call them my zigzag scissors. So whatever they're called, I'm trying to get this flat over each other so I can just cut. I should probably iron this. But, you know, I'm gonna try to skip a step if I can. So I'm just taking both of these and trying to cut these edges 
so they're kind of pretty along the edge. So that, I love these scissors for the fact that if you've got like a material or something that just can't, you can't fray it or you just don't like the way it looks on the edge, I love that you can just take these and just kind of make it pretty. Super easy. And these cut through material really well as all. I probably have to oil it. It feels like it's starting to get caught and it's old, but hey, it works. So it works. Okay, actually, let's see. Wrong scissors. I'm trying to see if it'll go around that. You can hear them squeaky, squeaky scissors. Okay. And I'm doubling it up because I it look it kind of fades into the background too much. It's this really pretty, I don't know if y'all can see that on camera, but it's this really shimmery, shiny um, tool, I guess. Um, and I just really love it. So I love the blue. It's kind of like an icy blue. Okay, so the next thing I do is just put some glue down and just kind of figure out where I want this to stick. And this is really why you don't have to iron. I guess it would make it easier. It wouldn't curl up. But once you put the glue down, see, it gets flat. So, and I'm going to put some more glue. And I'm just going to kind of lay this over it, but wonky, a little wonky. So you get different layers to it. Okay, that's not working. It doesn't want to stay. Let's put some more glue. And you just fiddle with it. And I'm gonna be sewing over it, so I really don't mind that it doesn't stick perfectly. Okay. And then I've gotta put some of the silver, where did my sheet go? On the little birds, just a little bit. We need to, we need to bling the birds up a little bit. Every time I lift that up, I get so excited. <laughs> uh, if you can see that. Blinged them up. Okay, I'm gonna put them off a little wonky too. I don't want them right in the middle. I want them a little wonky. Okay, and then I have, <laughs> y'all are gonna laugh. I literally found this little, um, I don't know, this little ballerina outfit or something and I cut it up and I think that's where the tutu part came from. And I love this, um, uh, this, um, really pretty ribbon and and these pieces as well. So I am going to try to cut a piece off of this. You can kind of literally cannibalize all your clothes. Okay, I want like a piece like that. That's where I got this piece from. So let's see if I can just Cut a little piece out. There we go. There's so many cool things on this. I'll be using a lot of this, I think, throughout. Okay, so I'm going to cut this. So look at that, now I have like a little a little blingy piece for underneath here. Okay, now this one I'm going to grab my craft glue. And I'm just gluing in the middle because I'm going to sew around. But I'm gonna, and this will get sewn on as well, but I can just glue it there to hold it. Ok, 
Okay. So then my next step, if you can see on this, this picture, I, I uh, sewed around the little um, picture with a zigzag um, stitch so it would sew this on as well. And then the next thing, so I'll wait, I'll do that off camera. I'll sew that. Um, but the next thing I did was then, I'll just trace it on here. Um, I just traced the tag, whoops, without it shifting. <laughs> just trace your tag. And then I'm gonna cut this one out. Where's my regular scissors? And this is gonna be the backing, just because I wanna um, reinforce the tag. And so you have a place to journal on the back. Okay, so this will go like so. But first, before that, I want to sew this top part. Oops, I keep dropping this ribbon. So this is was part of, this is another part, and I thought I had a piece that might be long enough. This one might be long enough. Let's see. That one might work. Where's my, so I grab my pinking shears and do the same thing at the top so the top is all pretty. And the sides, the bottom's not gonna matter because you're gonna see the bottom gets covered up. So the top has got the pinky, the pinking shears or the zigzag all the way around. And then with this, you're just gonna kind of squish it like this. So actually, I'm gonna go sew these right now on the sewing machine, which is off camera. Um, there we go. So I'm gonna sew that and sew this and I'll be right back. You can either fast forward or listen to me. So this one, I just did a straight stretch, stitch across the top because it will be hidden. You won't even see that. This one I did a uh, um, zigzag stitch around. And let me, some of this got sewn, but I'm gonna glue it a little bit more so it stays. Okay. Okay, and then let's see, my next thing is to glue the back of this to reinforce the tag. And I'm gonna sew around that as well, but I'll do that one off camera.
Okay. Oh, let me get rid of that. I like having little pieces of thread sticking out, but not too many. Okay. So another thing I did, if you've got, let me grab it. I'm gonna have to make some more for this uh, this journal. But if you have seam binding, comes in a roll like this. You can take your inks, um, your sprays, whatever you have, um, and you take water and you squish it all up and you get it all crinkly and um, you put your sprays and inks and, and such in there and you can make all different colored ribbon. This one I did kind of like a mix of blues and purples to go with the colors here. Um, actually, I had this left over from another project and the colors went perfectly. So I'm gonna have to make um, probably another batch of ribbon for this journal. So what I did um, to make this bow is you double it up and then you make your bow. Hope I have enough here. Oh, I might not have enough. Hang on, let's try that again. Double it up and make your bow like you're tying your shoe. Yeah, I might have to wait and get some more because I want this to be longer. But to get this look, you would double up your ribbon so then you've got like extra loops here. You've got like double loops and then you'll have your tails hanging down like this. And I want longer tails, like kind of like this. So I'm gonna need some more ribbon. I'm gonna have to make some more. But um, this is how you make the loops. You could do single loops if you want. You don't have to double up your ribbon, but I wanted like double loops. So then you would just glue that or you can sew it onto here. The first thing I would do though, is I'm gonna sew around just like I did on this. Sew around, if you can see that, a uh, zigzag stitch to sew the backing to the front. So now it's a sturdier um, piece and you can have room to journal on the back. But this is what it's going to look like. So I'm gonna have to make some more of this and let it sit overnight and dry. You gotta let it dry fully. So I'm gonna make some more of this for our album, but that's what you would do. You'd double up, and then once you have this part sewn, you can add that, and I'm gonna have the long tails hanging down kind of like this one. And there are our two tags, our two wintry tags. And when I do sew around, I lift this up, sew under it, and go around, and then I'll glue that down. So it doesn't look like I sewed over the, you can see, I left that part. So there you go. So hopefully this will give you guys some ideas. Um, I love the embossed background with the silver um, foil on it. And you can just come up, you can collage your tags. You can put some uh, ribbon and such. We're going to be making different tags, but I always want one of each um, in the first signature and the second signature. So I'm definitely going to do two of each tag. Um, throughout or two of each envelope or tags or whatever um, for this journal. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed. Hope this gives you some ideas and remember about the mica powders if you're ever going to use them. And we keep crafting, we keep learning from each other and that's the way it goes. That's the way it works. So thank you all so much for joining me. I'll see you in the next video. Have fun crafting. Bye y'all.